Hello, so in, in this video I want to talk about the, the income tax and dividend tax calculations for the, for the UK and kind of specifically for the tax year of 2023-24 but the concepts all apply to previous tax years but just with different thresholds and input parameters. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about how the actual calculation works. Um, but more specifically, the real purpose of the video is to actually demonstrate how you can do the calculation in Excel with no macros and just with simple input parameters that if you copy it, then you can build this into your own models. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this, if in case anyone's wondering, is because I, I wanted to do this recently and um, I wanted to run some scenarios in Excel in sort of tabular format where you can say, right, you know, I want to list a whole load of different combinations of inputs and, and eyeball the output. Um, and while there are plenty of online calculators that enable you to, to enter the, let's say, your, your total income, total dividend and, and get the, the tax breakdown for those scenarios, uh, there's, there's, there's no way I could see, there were no examples of how you can actually calculate it dynamically yourself in Excel so that you could actually see and compare the outputs without having to sort of manually keep entering into the um, into the web forms and then copying the results down and then entering again and copying the results down. Um, the, the calculations themselves also, um, while at first glance, uh, especially at the lower um, income ranges, are fairly straightforward, as you um, go into the higher tax brackets um, due to all the personal tax allowances and dividend allowances, they can get quite uh, quite complicated, especially when you consider that the the dividend income and the earned income together affect each other. So the, the, the income you get from dividend actually affects the amount of income tax you pay. The amount of income you get um, also affects the amount of dividend tax you pay. So all those things together, it's it's quite a quite an involved calculation. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about how it works now. If you're already familiar with how that works, then just skip ahead to the uh, next chapter where we actually show it in, in Excel. Um, I hope you find this uh, video in some way useful if you've been finding you're looking for a way to do this. If you do, please hit the like uh, um, and or subscribe button and that would be very helpful. So let's get into the uh, explanation of the calculation. So this is not supposed to be a video about the the ins and outs of, of the actual income tax or dividend tax per se. It's uh, but just to recap the concepts because they this is how the, the Excel formulas work. We've got a uh, line here representing the different tranches of earnings, the different tax brackets. The basic one, the basic one going from zero to, to 37,700, then the higher one going from there all the way up until 125,140, which is new for 2023-24. That's that that bracket that bracket has come down uh, from 150,000 previously. Um, and then the um, and then we've got the, the 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 concept of our personal tax allowance in green here, which effectively um, shifts that basic uh, that basic tax band up by by twelve thousand five hundred and seventy for those people whose total earnings is less than um, is less than a hundred thousand um, pounds. So enabling them to earn the first twelve thousand five hundred and seventy. Um, Tax free without paying any taxes. Um, so the 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 key point is so in t well in terms of the rates. So the the dividend tax rates um, for dividends that fall within the basic tax band are eight point seven five percent. For the higher rate tax band, it's thirty three point seven five percent. And for the additional tax band, the dividend rate is um, thirty nine point three five. But the key question is how how is it determined which band? The dividend actually or which band each portion of the dividend falls um, the first point um, to, to, to note so what I've drawn here is a um, let, let's say it's a, a hypothetical situation where um, an, an individual has um, a income shown in blue here right so their income is somewhere between it's just over uh, it's somewhere um, between 37 uh, 70 and 50,000 right so that's their income and now the, the the dividend is shown sort of uh, drawn to the right of that right so it's added on so, so the dividend is um say you know something like 40 40,000 right so that that so that that takes their total earnings right this this scenario here to this point on the timeline right so say something like 90,000 right so the the first point is the it's the the combination of the person's income right and their dividend right 
determines how much of their personal allowance they have remaining. And that, that explains why there is the, 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 the income from dividends directly impacts the amount of income tax you pay on your earned salary. Because if your combined earned income and dividend exceed that £100,000 mark and take you into the death, the death zone where you're actually losing one pound of tax-free allowance for every two pounds you earn, then you're going to be you're going to start to pay more income tax because the, the amount at which your basic rate tax kicks in is being brought closer and closer to to zero from an initial starting point of twelve thousand five hundred seventy. But the crucial thing is, the in so on this on this earnings line, let's call it earnings line. The income is always listed first, right? Because the the, the the dividend tax rates at, in each band are obviously significantly lower than income tax. So you might say, well, you know, can I put can I put my dividend first and then my and then my income later? Um, um, the answer is no, right? So you the the income is always is always taxed first, and then the dividend is then tacked onto the end of it. So 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 the 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 income tax calculation it otherwise is unchanged. The only impact that the dividend has on income tax is is the impact of the dividend on the tax free allowance right the impact of the income on the dividend is that it's, it essentially sets the point at which the dividend is first considered right and then the question becomes how much of that dividend lies within each uh, within each tax bracket right and then we apply the applicable tax uh, the applicable tax rate, the dividend tax rate for the proportion of that dividend that lies within each range, and that gives us how much dividend tax we're paying, right? A um, couple of scenarios here. So let's say um, this person's dividend, when when added onto their salary, takes them to this point here. Um, they're going to pay essentially. They're going to pay 8.75% on this portion, right? That sits within um, within the um, within the 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 basic. Uh, tax bracket because they're still within the basis because they're still they're still underneath that threshold of fifty thousand two hundred and seventy because they still have their tax free allowance um, and then they're going to pay they're going to pay thirty three point seven five which is the higher rate uh, dividend tax rate on the proportion which sits between fifty thousand two seventy and the actual um, and the actual amount that um, that that is their dividend right so 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 it's they're they're paying it in two chunks. Um, there is one nuance here, right? Which is that, that there is this uh, that there is a one thousand pound per annum tax free allowance for dividends. Um, it's actually more like a nil band rate. Um, the difference. So the the reason I stress that is because you can't just take your dividend amount and then subtract one thousand from it and then add it to the timeline here, right? So you can't just you can't just uh, knock that one thousand pounds off and make this line shorter. What actually happens is that this this nil rate tax band actually applies to the first one thousand pounds, right, of dividend here. So the first one thousand pounds here, you're you're actually not paying any tax on. But crucially, that one thousand pounds does count towards the overall length of this line, which obviously then then impacts the 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 amount of your total income, which which. Uh, which obviously um, is is instrumental in determining your personal tax allowance, etc. So that first one thousand pounds of dividend um, at the beginning of the line, the beginning of the dividend line, is not taxable. So in Excel, what we end up doing is actually funding this back as a as a rebate, um, which which I'll it'll hopefully be clear in the formula. But because it's it's actually this 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 one thousand pounds could potentially even span. Two different, uh, two different tax bands, right? So if the if the earnings take if the earnings from if the if the earnings income takes you very close to like within one thousand pounds of the next uh, tax bracket, then that one thousand uh, tax free dividend allowance is actually spanning two different tax brackets, um, which complicates the the calculation. But it's implemented in the Excel sheet, right? So, and then if the in the second scenario. Right, the second scenario here, where where the dividend actually extends into the death zone, right? So it it goes beyond one hundred thousand pounds. So we're now starting to erode that tax free allowance. Then this line here, this green line, which is the basic, uh, the upper limit of the basic tax band, is now shifting to the left, right? So now we're we're now paying eight point seven five percent on a smaller, on a smaller chunk of that dividend, 
and we're paying 33.75% on the remainder, right? So then that's because we've shifted that tax, that, that basic uh, tax upper uh, limit to the left, right? And then the final scenario, if our dividend actually takes us right into the death zone and beyond, um, somewhere beyond 125140, that then at that point, we've lost our entire tax personal tax allowance, which means that our, our um, that that our higher rate, our higher dividend rate, is going to kick in at thirty seven thousand seven hundred. So we're going to be paying that that higher rate tax on all of the dividend, right? The entire amount up to here, and then on top of that, we're going to be paying the higher, the additional rate, sorry, of thirty nine point three five percent on anything between the upper limit and anything you know, and 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 that chunk, that chunk there, right? So so that's. That's really what that's the, that's the challenge that we're facing in terms of the calculation is stack the dividend on top of the income on the on the earnings timeline and then and then determine how much of the dividend falls within each bracket taking into account the one thousand pound dividend allowance okay so let's see how that actually works uh, in Excel all right so before we go into the Excel just want to show you a quick example of one of the online calculators that is typical. Um, so you, you got the two, the two inputs that we're interested in here are the the total earnings or, or gross salary, and the total dividends, right? Um, and if we so if we start with just a you know, let's say ten thousand pound salary and a twenty thousand dividend, you can see that the you got the income tax there, but we're particularly interested in the dividend tax, and we're going to be referring back and forth to this calculator as we go uh, just to validate the um, the results of the the formulas. But so so this is this is a typical calculator. Obviously, it's it's a bit cumbersome. If you want to see certain scenarios played out in a table that you maybe can plot on a graph or whatever, you would have to keep changing these numbers and then copy the copy the output back into your sheet which is very manual very tedious um, doesn't scale so and, and that's that, that's what we're hoping to get around in, in in the Excel so let's have a quick look so here's the spreadsheet I've put together up here we've got the the two same two inputs that we're interested in so the 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 total uh, the total income the dividend income um, these are just these are just FY fields uh, and then these are the two the two output fields that we're interested in, so the income tax and the dividend tax. Um, I started, so with, with these particular parameters, there's no income tax to pay. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll go through some uh, combinations of this in a second. Um, the, the formulas themselves, I've just just copied them longhand uh, into this into these boxes so you can just get an idea um, they are so they are a bit they are a bit horrendous uh, and um, they I've just full disclosure I have not sort of typed these out longhand I started with a uh, I started essentially with a band by band breakdown with lots of intermediary uh, calculations and then I just compressed it all back into one expression because I didn't want to I didn't want to have I didn't want to have like, lots of fields in, in Excel. Um, I just wanted to literally base it on the on the input parameters, right? So the, the, the both of these formulas, the one for in, income tax and dividend tax, they require two things. All right? So your, your table must have a total income gross uh, column and a total dividend gross column. Um, and it also must have a it must have a list of fields with these particular names. And whatever values you want, these are the these are the 20, 23, uh, 24 values, right? You can change these next year if the if the values change, and um, but but you must name the cells. You can see that up up here in the name name box, you must name the actual cells with those with those reference names. So as long as you have those two things, you can you can paste the these formula in, right? And I'll I'll, I'll show that in a second, right? So um, up here. This is this is you know a let's say a slimmed down version of what a typical table might look like, um, just to show it in action. So I've I've just got a, a sort of an extract of a of a, a sort of much bigger uh, a bigger table right um, down here, which is uh, which is intended to show the type of scenario that you might want to see dividend tax as part of. I've just blanked out the the income tax columns for now. So if, for income tax, if I just copy the copy this entire uh, formula right and then just drop it into the drop it into there 
Then we've got our income tax filled out. And again, the only things that it's referencing to are the, the relevant columns, so the, which is basically the total income and the total dividend, both gross, and also these config values, which you need to make sure are in your spreadsheet as well. And then for dividend tax, which is over here, then we, if, if we just copy the entire dividend tax formula, right, and just copy it in into there, then we have our dividend tax column filled out as well, right? So don't worry about what's in the rest of this table. I will be going over um, actually the usage of this in another video. Uh, it's, it's outside the scope of this uh, this particular topic. But I, I, so at this point, hopefully you can understand essentially how to how, how to get this calculation working in your own spreadsheets. I will comment, well, I'll, I'll add these in the description um, below this video. I'll add the formula so you can um, get hold of them. If you want to get hold of a copy of the spreadsheet, just leave a comment um, and I will, um, I'll, I'll make it, make it available. Um, and the, the, I think other than that, it's probably worth sort of pointing out that clearly, you know, this is a, um, it's a fairly complex calculation. It's less complex than, than, it, than it appears, but it is fairly complex due to the way that the income tax and dividend tax themselves together alter the 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 ranges, the tax band ranges, and depending on what the values are. So uh, I obviously can't be accountable for uh, for any um, any errors that there might be in this formula. I've done a fair amount of testing. I'm going to do a little bit of validation just to show and show that it. Um, that it seems to work across the entire range of uh, values, but like I said, if it, you know, if you please use it at your discretion and uh, and uh, you know test it out on a few things before before you make any decisions based on it, right? So um, what I want to do is just just take a, a few different values. I'm just going to plug them in. We're going to go back up here. Going to plug them in up here and check that the values are the same as the calculator. Uh, and hopefully there will be and we can um, and, and then just so you guys are, ha have some level of confidence that this actually does work right um, so let's start so 10,000 um, 10,000 pound total income and 20,000 pound dividend and we got a dividend tax uh, 1437 which we've already seen over here right um, if we just up that to 30,000 uh, then what's so we're just going to what we're going to do is change the salary each time not the dividend right so the salary is now 30000 the dividend is 20000 and the tax the dividend tax is uh, 166250 on on both screens which is fine um so if we if we go up to 110000 and you can see already it's changed. So if we go up to 110,000, then what's happened is that the so the income has actually pushed some of that dividend into the additional tax brand, right? Into that additional rate um, tax bracket, which means that that small portion that has gone beyond is now being taxed at uh, over 39, 39%. percent. Um, and, and you can see that um, you can see that obviously the the numbers are still consistent, so that's that's good. It would be worrying if it wasn't. Um, if, and, and then if we, if we, you know, as we go even higher, um, then, uh, you know, you get the idea, um, seven, four, six, so seven, four, seven, seven, six, seven. So, so the num the numbers tie out basically at every stage during the, during the, um, the, along the timeline. So I don't know, maybe some would say the best thing to do here would be to, let's say, write a macro, um, maybe um, but if you if you want to if you want to sort of keep your excel spreadsheets free of macros and you want a way to have a dynamic inline dividend tax calculation and, and income tax calculation but the, in, the income tax one is much simpler um, then there you go so so uh, i will i'll leave the formulas in the in the comments below please like and subscribe if you like the video and uh, yeah thank you for watching